Such a simple thing, isn't it? How can such a simple thing cause so much trouble? <laughs> Today we're scanning the keel of a sailing boat with this, an iPhone. Being a wooden boat builder, I'm not that convinced, but I'm left with absolutely no choice. So let's give it a shot, eh? Okay, so let me give you a rundown of what's going on here. We have a sailing boat, we're building it from basically the hull up, and we need to make the keel out of two tonne of molten lead, and that needs to go into a mold. And I want to take a scan to make that mold. Well, there's only two of these boats, aside from ours, in the world. The molds no longer exist, and the drawings have gone missing. So I've got to take a physical mold. So we're on our way to Ardfern in the west coast of Scotland, and this place is stunning. But basically, we're so lucky to have tracked one down to the same country that we're in. I mean, how lucky is that? So this boat is getting lifted out of the water for the owner, and he's preparing it to go to Scandinavia. And he's not got that much time, but they've been so kind as to give us one hour in the slings. Now that's the main constraint here, one hour. So we've gone down the lines of a scan. The initial scanning company, their scanner broke. So that left us in a pickle, but we were really lucky. Dan and Kika from Sailing Uma got in touch with us and said, look, why don't you do this with an iPhone? You could do it with an iPhone. We do it on Uma all the time. And they're doing their interior layout and all that kind of stuff on Uma. They've had some good results. Now they're quite tech savvy. I'm not really good at computers. So I'm on my way to a castle. Because there's loads of castles in Scotland, right? And that would be amazing. So the, there's loads of texture, there's loads of highlights and loads of shadows. And if anything's gonna work, I think that's the one. And not only that, if you're gonna go to Scotland, you might as well see a castle, right? So let's get to a castle, let's do some scans, find out exactly what type of scan we're gonna go with, and go and do it. We are now in Scotland, we're on the banks of where are we at? Loch Sween, that's where we are. Jenny's brought me to this really, really cool place. This is Castle Sween. It is absolutely fantastic. And it's kind of the perfect place for us to do a little bit of a pre-test with this phone and see what we can find out. So photogrammetry and LiDAR, which one we're gonna go with tomorrow. So I found these really cool bits and bobs, the ancient thingy bobbers of Scottish heritage. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna shoot everything in photogrammetry and everything in LiDAR and I'm looking for things that have got texture, find any signs and cool stuff like that. Yeah, just to get an idea which one's easiest and gives the, the best results for someone like me who's not really sure what he's doing. To be honest, I still can't believe you can do this sort of thing with a telephone. I cannot believe we are scanning a castle with an iPhone. <laughs> we are trying two different types of scan, LiDAR and photogrammetry. I am no expert, but we have read up last night. <laughs> LiDAR is unique to iPhone and it is um, basically bouncing light off an object and then meshing it together to create a 3D object. Photogrammetry is using images or photographs and I think it uses the lights and the shadows and maps that together to create a mesh. How we're getting this 3D object is through an app called Polycam. Again, we've never used this, but the reviews seem pretty good and it's free for the first month. <laughs> and we can export this 3D um, model in different file types, which hopefully we can get into CAD to help us make the mold to pour two tonne of lead. <laughs> now Chris is super hooked on accuracy today. And that's why we came to the castle because there's lots of shapes and textures and different lights because tomorrow we really want to get an accurate scan. I'm already anxious. Tomorrow is going to be here too soon. So hopefully these scans Chris is doing, he's going to nail them. And uh, yeah, we cracked this first time. Wish us luck. So what have we learned from that then? Well, basically what we have learned is both of them get drop frames and kind of like whirly squirly distortions going on and all that kind of thing, which is, it's okay for a lot of stuff, but I mean, it's not fantastic. So we do have a trick for that. Tomorrow we get to find out if it works. Let's find out. This has been six months in the making to coordinate this day. All we know is we have one hour to scan this keel of our sister ship. 
our nerves are running high as we soon find out if we are ready for this. So this thing looks absolutely mean. She's really, really built the go place to fight. It's like, I don't know, it looks so fast and so capable of just having the, the meanest adventure I think ever. I love it. So Bruce is basically, Bruce is washing it down now and then we've got an hour where we're allowed to use the lift. Well, not us personally, but they're gonna chock the boat for us to be able to have it so we can go underneath it safely. And then in an hour's time, they gotta use the lift for something else. So basically, that's our time frame today. I'm feeling quite confident. Um, I mean, the bulb looks so simple, doesn't it? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? I shouldn't be feeling confident because I've got very little experience with this scanner and I know that we've got to dry the keel off and all that kind of stuff to even make this work. But um, yeah, fingers crossed, eh? That's all we can do is hope for the best. First things first, we're going to just dry the keel down to get rid of any glare. And then we've got a reflector here, you know, one of those like Hollywood kind of reflectors. I'm going to put this on the floor to bounce some light up. So hopefully this will give us a bit of light underneath the keel to get rid of those horrible shadows. So I'm just going to run around now, dry her up so that we've got no huge bits of glare. And then anything that's too shiny, I'm going to hit it with a scotch bright to try and reduce it again. I've got this thing on in the hope that we can get a uniform background just to stop confusing it a little bit uh, and we'll see what we get. We're going to run around it with uh, photogrammetry and we're going to do some LiDAR as well and hopefully one of them will work. Are you stressed? A little bit of stress, yeah. The time pressure was already getting to us with the knowledge that the guys in the yard need this lift back in action ASAP. Before we could get started scanning though, we had to create some super non-technical reference points for the LiDAR scanner to use to help minimise the drifting that happens when it can't quite remember where it last was. And it starts overlapping sections and we think that's where the deformation spawned from. We then threw on some dots as we were given a tip off from the scanning company who let us down that this is what they do. So here's hoping we just needed their advice and not their two grand scanning gear to get this keel scanned and pour our own two ton of lead. So we hopped to it with the LiDAR scan as recommended by Sailing Uma because we knew this was quick and we could always do it again quickly at the end if it didn't work. So we have got the LiDAR scan loading as we speak. Um, it's windy. <laughs> I'm trying to download the Polycam uh, app to this phone. So while this is uh, processing, five minutes left, um, we can do the photo scan. Then we went on a photogrammetry frenzy to try and map this keel as best we could because this was our only shot at this. This boat's off to the Norwegian fjords after this, and we don't even know where the other sister ship is. We're not going to bore you with all the hundreds of photos we took of this keel, but we squeezed in 15 different scans in the hope that one might be accurate enough for the task ahead of us. And it's a good job we did all 15. Before we could take a breather, we also wanted to take some hand measurements before we couldn't access the bottom of the bulb when it's out of the slings. This was, well, because Chris is a traditional boat builder and was nervous about relying on an iPhone. And it gives us something to cross-reference when editing the CAD for the next stage of this epic project. All right, so I'm pretty pleased to have that out of the way. Whether it was actually any good or not, let's find out. That's what we're going to do now. So I went back and I manually did some drawings on that. It's called lofting in the boat world. If anyone's actually interested in how you traditionally do that, we'll go into that in another episode. Right now, we're going to go and find out the difference between photogrammetry, which is such a mouthful, and LiDAR. So into the office and go and check out 
which one's actually best. Ah, welcome to the office. Let me show you around. This is a typical Scottish office out in the Inner Hebrides, I suppose. We've got the stove, we've got the kettle on as well. We'll put that on later for you guys. Outside's an amazing view. We've got, this is Doris Mall, which is a part of Scotland with amazing fast tides running through it. And then the mountains on the left, the main one that would be of note to people is the one on the left, which is the uh, Isle of Jura, where the whiskey's made. But in between those two big islands is the Corrie Reckon. That's like the third largest whirlpool in the world. And we used to sail around these parts and that was petrifying. We sailed that in our first year of sailing. That was one hell of an adventure and I can't wait to be back at that. Anyway, you're not here for that, you're, you're here for this. So let's have a look at these drawings. So I've put these into a, a program called Blender, which is what I'm going to use to just try and make this a little bit more smoothed out and the likes, because literally the detail is it's absolutely fantastic. We can literally see all of the bits of um, anti-foul that are flaking off it, all of the little dots that we put on. It's absolutely brilliant. So all in all, I think what we've learned from this is it's pretty damn accurate. And if I'm honest with you, having measured this with, you know, a cheapo tape measure um, on a boatyard where we're actually trying to get everything as level as we can, and we're only having to do this by eye because it's only ever going to be as good as what our eyes can tell us in lines with the likes of a, a spirit level, which is what we use traditionally. So the reality is that is probably way more accurate than what we got by our traditional sort of measuring styles. So what I found with LiDAR was basically it's super good and it scans really, really quick, which is awesome. But if you just take a look at this on the phone still, I didn't even bother downloading it because it's just not worth it. It's awesome, but we get so many of these drop frames. So if I spin this right around here slowly, we just get like loads of eaten up horrible parts of keel like this in every single shot. You know, we never got one decent shot with LiDAR that was actually usable. Um, to put that into perspective, we got out my, because um, my, my phone's an iPhone, like I am quite fond of the Apple gear to be quite honest with you, but mine's an old phone, it's a, a mini. So we did the iPhone mini, which is the old mini as well. It's not the, the newer one, it's the, and that was great. I mean, look at this. Again, slightly wobbly at the back of the keel just here. Not the best shot of the back of the keel, but all in all, so we can just see the back of the keel was a bit not right there underneath, but everywhere else was great. And the reality of it is, is that that was pretty good, although, you know, it's not perfect. But the best ones we got were with an iPhone 11, which is Jenny's old phone before we bought this. Which basically means that this whole iPhone 15, it's as good as this. Now nah, I'm only kidding, we don't need to throw that away because it's got a 14 day no money back guarantee. So we're gonna take it back because to be quite honest with you, it's absolutely pointless. You know, we were sold this on the pretense it was gonna work as a scanner and be great for what we want. And it's all marketing hype. Now I'm not against Apple products. I really like them. We use their laptops, we use their phone and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, the scanning is just not as good as photogrammetry, which works really, really well. I think it's different if you want to do a whole house or something like that. If you're gonna do a massive house or buildings or outside or something, yeah, you need that speed and that's what the LiDAR gives you. But if you're doing objects, I think photogrammetry is better. And ideally, if we'd had time, we would have set up a DSLR mirrorless style camera and just shot loads and loads of pictures. But you know, we need to shoot somewhere around two to 400 pictures to get a good scan. So that wasn't really possible for us with the time frame that we had. So the phone has been saved from the Gulf of the Corrie Brecken. She doesn't need to go in there. And basically, yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and use those to start building our yacht, which is a bit nerve wracking still, but we do have those loftings, the traditional manner, but I think we'll go with the scan. It looks pretty good. So if you wanna see how we actually turn this into a two ton lead bulb, do stick around, join us, follow us along and subscribe for the journey. It's all free and all that stuff. So just get involved, It'd be really, really cool. So yeah, I'm actually petrified, uh, petrified. I'm so petrified, I can't even say it. Two ton of molten lead, not like an adventure, eh? A big thanks to the guys at Ardfern Yacht Centre. These guys have been legendary 
from first thing this morning, telling us what's going on, making it all happen, giving us plenty of time, not stressing us for time, just being really helpful the whole time. So massive thanks to those guys. And uh, yeah, let's hope we can do them proud and actually build a bulb which is good enough and worthy of the time that they've let us have.